and philosophy help us to slow down in the modern world and to live our lives more in touch with nature? One answer was provided by the 19th century American essayist, lecturer and poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Emerson, born in Boston in 1803, was influenced by a philosophical movement emerging from the divinity faculty at Harvard University, which became known as transcendentalism. Emerson soon became one of its leading lights with the founding in 1836 of the Transcendental Club. To the transcendentalists, the power of human reason comes through connecting in the present moment with the natural world around, providing an inlet to a universal intelligence, which Emerson called the Oversoul, a single universal being in which we are all united. It was through this connection that we're able to transcend individual limitations and perspectives. Understanding the inner workings of the world and of mankind comes through being present, truly present in nature. So Emerson wrote, in the woods, we return to reason and faith. There I feel that nothing can befall me in life, no disgrace, no calamity, leaving me my eyes, which nature cannot repair. Standing on the bare ground, my head bathed by the blithe air and uplifted into infinite space, all mean egotism vanishes. I become a transparent eyeball. I am nothing. I see all. The currents of the universal being circulate through me. I am part or particle of God. Emerson was the son of a minister in the Unitarian Church. He was himself ordained as a Unitarian minister, but he resigned a few years later. Not, it seems, through any fundamental disagreement with the theology, but because he felt that true understanding comes through one's own searching and from some form of what he called intuition, rather than being imparted second or third hand through organized religion. He traveled to Europe, where he was influenced by meetings he had with poets of the Romantic movement and other contemporary thinkers, including Wordsworth, Coleridge, John Stuart Mill, and Thomas Carlyle. And on returning to Boston, this was in 1833, he embarked on his career as a lecturer. Although he wrote a number of essays and poems, it seems that it was through his growing reputation as a powerful speaker that Emerson rose to prominence. Emerson's thinking, and that of transcendentalism more widely, was influenced by a variety of sources, including English Romanticism, German Idealism, and the ancient Greek philosophies of Plato, Plotinus, and others. But Emerson and his followers also discovered and admired the ancient Indian scriptures, which were only then becoming available in the West, including the Bhagavad Gita, the Vedas, and the Upanishads. It was largely through the transcendentalists that these Eastern scriptures became widely known to an American readership. In the year the Transcendental Club was founded, Emerson published his first book entitled Nature. He argued that nature is the most important factor in education and that the diversity observed in nature is governed by underlying laws, which are also laws of the human mind. Books, he said, are also important for education but only so far as they enable us to discover truths for ourselves, because action is also essential. Only so much do I know as I have lived, Emerson wrote. And he insisted that education was for everyone. We must all be self-reliant, which to Emerson is one of the cardinal virtues, so that we may each walk on our own feet and speak our own minds. Personal freedom at every level was paramount to him. Other members of the Transcendental Club included well-known contemporaries of Emerson, such as Margaret Fuller, a woman's rights activist and the first female war correspondent, and the naturalist Henry David Thoreau. Transcendentalism was perhaps the most significant philosophical movement in 19th century America, especially in literary circles, where it influenced authors and poets, including Louisa May Alcott, Walt Whitman, and Emily Dickinson. While Emerson based his approach to life on the ancient teachings which had come down to him, 
he was not prepared to accept them unquestioningly. He kept inquiring into their essential meaning and developing his understanding on the basis of his own experience in the belief that men and women have access to the highest reason and to universal truths within themselves. He that is once admitted to the right of reason is made a free man of the whole estate, Emerson wrote. What Plato has thought, he may think. What a saint has felt, he may feel. And what at any time has befallen any man, he can understand. Who hath access to this universal mind is a party to all that is or can be done. To Emerson, this is how we come to know anything of worth, by connecting in the here and now with nature around us, which is also our nature. Ultimately, we're all united in the one being, Advaita, as the Eastern scriptures call this. It was owing to such thinking that the transcendentalists were amongst the first environmentalists, speaking out against the growing industrialization and destruction of nature which they, which they saw in the world around them, and which prevented men and women from experiencing nature. A man cannot be happy and strong, Emerson wrote, until he too lives with nature in the present, above time. What I really like about Emerson is how, just 50 years after the American Revolution, he began to, to lead people in his own country and around the world to think for themselves, to be self-reliant, and to trust their own instincts and experiences, to inquire into and discover the truth for themselves without depending on the institutional religions inherited from their European roots. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the school's channel for further videos and visit our website for information on other lectures, courses and events.